this works. <laughs> testing, testing. I'm going to try this again. We'll see if it works. Um, let me know. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, guys? All right. I got some of my favorite people in the house. Thank you guys for joining me for another attempted live video. <laughs> I don't know why I'm having so much technical difficulty here with these live videos. So I'm just going to let it settle for a couple minutes. Just listen to some nice music here. And um, yeah, hopefully, I don't know what the issue is. Some people could see me clearly, some people couldn't. Is that my internet? Is that your internet? Um, but I'm just going to chat with you guys here a little bit. Um, how's the audio quality? Do I sound kind of like, does my voice sound clear or is it a little bit muddy? Um, yeah, you know, the last time when I was, when I tried to go live for the first, the first video, um, man, that music is really loud. Where's my remote? <laughs> I need to turn down the volume. <laughs> anyway, it's okay. You can hear me. Um, so the first time I tried to use a program on my laptop that was, uh, it, it, I don't know, I didn't understand it, but the audio got really messed up. So is my audio better than the last video? I hope it is. Because this microphone, it's a good microphone. Um, so it's not the microphone's fault. It's, it's technology's fault. And I don't understand technology. If you ever get frustrated with technology, you just think about me because my whole life is based on technology, right? I mean, this is how I make my money. This is how I live. I live on technology. <laughs> Guys, nothing's working right for me today. <laughs> All right. Drop my phone, drop my teaching stick. All right. Guys, wish me some luck. Thank you so much for uh, <laughs> for sticking with me. So, yeah, um, nice people in the comments are saying, okay, there's, so people are saying the video and the sound are good. Um, it's maybe better, I don't know. Guys, I'm trying hard here. So thank you for, thank you for sticking with me. And uh, I'll start again. I'll start the video again. Um, the first one was a little bit something, some, we had some technical difficulties. So in case uh, we got some new viewers, then uh, it'll be a surprise. The first vocabulary word will be a surprise. All right. So, so like I said, we're going to learn some animal vocabulary. All right. Five seconds left. Three, two, one. All right. Here we go. So in this video, we're going to watch some, some animal videos and try to describe them. Okay, uh, so I want to test your vocabulary about animals. This isn't just kind of normal, everyday vocabulary. Right? We're talking like pretty specific words. So I think you're going to, I think you're going to learn a couple new words. Right? So let's watch the first video here. And... Uh, I want you to describe what is going on here. How would you describe this scene? Well, I'll tell you. Okay, this thing here, this thing, whatever it's made of, cement, concrete, bricks, I'm not sure. This is called a bird bath. Okay, so yeah. It's a bird bath. Now, this part of the bird bath is kind of a fountain, right? So the water is kind of, you know, coming out here and birds just love this kind of a thing. So if you come to Canada here, you'll see very often people will have a, a bird bath in their yard, in their backyard, probably, you know, just just to attract birds. And um, it's, it's really nice, right? Birds love taking baths in water. So that's the first word bird bath. Did you know it or did you not? All right, are you guys ready for the second one? I'll just uh, just read a couple comments here. Someone said birds 
having a shower. <laughs> yeah, you could say they're, they're kind of having a shower. But that thing is called a bird bath. So the birds are taking a bath in the bird bath. All right. All right. So um, someone's asking, hey, Mark, how have you been? Well, I'm uh, doing great. Yeah, thank you so much. I've been doing well. It's really cold here in Calgary this week. The last, uh, maybe about the last 10 days or so have been really cold, like minus 20, minus 30. Well, not minus 30 in real temperature, but, you know, with the wind chill here in Calgary, you know, the other day, yesterday, I can't remember if it was yesterday or two days ago, I went outside and uh, it was freezing. And I looked on my phone and it said it, it felt like minus 31 degrees. But the real temperature was only minus 22. So very often that's the case here in Calgary where, you know, the temperature might not even seem that cold. It might be like minus 15 or minus 20, which is kind of normal for, for, you know, a Canadian winter. But when you add the wind, the wind just makes it brutal. So that's why you always have to check on the weather app. If you scroll down a little bit, it'll say the feels like temperature. And that's the more important temperature, especially if you're going to be going outside because the wind, I mean, the wind just hits your face and it's just like, it's brutal. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's been cold this last couple of weeks. Um, and I think for the next, for the next while, it's going to be cold, uh, as well, probably till Christmas and after Christmas. All right. So let's, um, let's go to the next word. So that was the bird bath. All right. Now this one is, this is a great word. This is, you're going to learn something here. All right. I guarantee you, if you don't learn anything, give me a thumbs down. I deserve a thumbs down. Okay. So let's watch this video. Look at that guys. Isn't that amazing? Just all those fish, how all those fish just swim in a formation. <laughs> Isn't that just insane? How do they all know where they're going? I mean, how are they, how do they know they're supposed to be swimming like that? It's like such a, it's like a work of art. It really looks like a work of art when you see these, these groups of fish right now. You wouldn't describe it as a group of fish. I mean, you could, but that's not the best way to describe it, okay? I would describe it as a school of fish, all right? Let me see if anybody guessed that, if anybody guessed a school of fish. So, um, someone said it looks like underwater. Yes, it is underwater. It's the bottom of a river. Well, I wouldn't say it's the bottom of a river. It looks like it's the bottom of a an ocean, you know, because we have some seaweed here, right? This kind of a, a plant is, is like seaweed, right? So, um, <laughs> some people are saying some different things here. I love uh, making these live videos, like just, just reading what you guys write, just having a, you know, conversation with you guys live. It's, uh, there's a little bit of a delay, I don't know how many second delay there is. So between the time I ask you a question and by the time I read it, th there, there might be, um, there might be a few like 15 seconds or maybe 20 seconds delay, but, um, it's still great chatting with you guys live. Okay. So I'm going to, I would describe this as a school of fish. Now, someone in the comments said a fish shoal. Okay. So that's interesting, right? So what's the difference between a shoal and a school? Because very often you hear both of these words when people are talking about fish. You hear them say like a shoal of fish or a school of fish. Do you guys know the difference? Well, I, uh, to be honest, I didn't know the difference. So I looked it up this morning when I was making this video. I, I looked it up to, to see the difference and I learned something. Okay, so this is why you, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to learn something too. Okay, so this is what it said. All right. In biology, right, any group of fish. My heater just turned on. <laughs> Can you, did you hear that? So in here in, in, in Canada, houses have central heating. And uh, it's kind of annoying 
if you're trying to make a video like I'm trying to do right now, and suddenly it's like, zzz, like the, 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 the furnace, my furnace room is right there. The furnace like kicks on and then uh, it blows hot air throughout the house, through the vents. It's called central heating. So when it's cold outside, like it is now, I don't know what it's out now, like maybe minus 20, minus 30. When it's cold, the, the heat just comes on. It kicks on. We use that we use that verb kick. If something kind of switches on, you can say the heat kicks on. If it's really cold outside, the heat kicks on every few minutes. So, um, but anyway, I'll try not to get distracted by the heater. So in biology, any group of fish that stay together for social reasons are shoaling. Okay, so a group of fish that are together, you can describe that as a shoal of fish. Okay, and if the group is swimming in the same direction in a coordinated manner, they are schooling. Now, I got this directly off Wikipedia, so I can't be lying, right? Everything on the internet is true. You know, whatever you read on the internet is true, right? So I believe it. This came directly from the internet. So it must be true. And you know what? There's another aspect of this word school, a school of fish. I think if it's a school of fish, they're all the same species of fish. All right. So, I mean, most of the time people hang out or not people, well, people too, but um, animals and creatures in general hang out with their same kind, right? So in English, we have uh, an idiom, uh, birds of a feather flock together, right? Why, why do we have that idiom? Well, it's birds of a similar kind of a feather, right? That's how the idiom goes. Birds of a feather flock together. That means they stay together. So, you know, here in Canada... These days, it's winter, right? If you look up in the sky, you'll see flocks of geese flying south for the winter, right? And they're all geese, right? They fly in a V pattern. I've made a video about that, or I've, sh I've shown that in my videos in the past. So you look up in the sky and you see these flocks of geese. They're all geese. You don't see like a few ducks in there or a few parrots, you know, or a few finches, few ostriches now you don't see that you're just you all you see all geese right so birds of a feather flock together so we could use that idiom to describe fish too we could say you know birds of a feather flock together fish of the same species are they, they generally hang out so when you see these cool like you know this it's almost like artwork it's like a display of art right when these fish are just like millions of fish are like swimming in a form formation they're usually all the same kind of fish you don't see a bunch of like you don't see like some sharks some goldfish some tuna fish puffer fish i don't know different kinds of fish they generally don't hang out with each other right so um so that's an aspect of this word school as well. So when fish are in a school, they're moving in the same direction in a coordinated manner. That's so interesting how fish coordinate with each other. Um, and they're usually the same species. Okay, so that's what I learned this morning. Uh, let me know, did you learn that as well? Um, so hopefully everything is still going well with my video here. I should keep my phone right up here on my knee just to make sure if the video suddenly stops like it did the first time I tried this. I don't know why it stopped. Okay, so um, let's go on to the next one. Uh, now, oh yeah, I was just going to show you guys again. Like, they all look the same. They, lo they look this, like the same kind of fish, right? Um, you don't see a bunch of other kinds of fish. Now, there's one fish here, and this fish looks a little bit different. But um, most, for the most part, they're the same species of fish. All right. All right, so, um, oh, now this is beautiful, guys. So, watch this video and uh, let me know what's going on here. What do you see? All right, just reading some of your comments here. Thank you guys so much for the great comments. Um, 
yeah. So what's your answer here? What's going on? You see a bunch of things swimming around. What are these? What's the word for them in English? Well, I'll tell you, okay. Right here, we see a bloom of jellyfish swimming around. Are they swimming or floating? I don't know. You can use either word. Okay, a bloom of jellyfish. <laughs> Did you know that? All right, so we're going to go here. And uh, that's how you describe, you can describe a, a group of jellyfish. Okay, you can describe it as a bloom or a smack or a swarm. Now, this is something else I learned this morning. I was just thinking about what to teach you about animals. I thought, let's make a fun video about animals as my second live stream. And uh, I thought, what is a group of jellyfish called? And I thought, I, I, I don't know what a, a group of jellyfish is called. So I looked it up. All right. So one of the confusing things about English is that every animal, every different kind of animal has its own name for a group. You can use a, the word group if you don't know the specific name. Like you could say a group of geese. But anytime in English you can use a more specific word, it's better. So it's better to say a flock of geese, right? Or a bloom of jellyfish, <laughs> or a smack, or a swarm. So you can use three words, I guess. Some animals, maybe there's not just one word. Um, so do you know what these words mean? Uh, they have other meanings. Okay, so if you just see this word bloom... You know, most of the time in English, uh, when we use the word bloom, we, we're talking about a flower. You know, like if a flower, let me just uh, put my phone back up on my knee. Whoops, try not to bump my microphone. If a flower blooms, right, it, uh, it's, it's like it's coming to life, right? It's, uh, it, it's, first, it's a bud. And then in the springtime, right, the bud turns into the flower that's called blooming. So, you know, yeah, it's a kind of a different meaning. One is talking about jellyfish. Another is the more common one is talking about flowers, right? So this word uh, smack, this is a funny way to describe jellyfish. I don't know why on earth, who came up with that? A smack of jellyfish. Do you know what the word smack means? Um, the word smack means to hit with your hand to slap really fast. Um, it's like another word for slap, right? So if you smack someone, you know, you smack them in the head. <laughs> and very often we use, we use the back of our hands to smack. So when you see this word smack, meaning to hit, very often it's with the back of your hand, like smack them in the head, right? Maybe uh, if a kid is misbehaving, you know, maybe the parent will say, stop it, smack them, smack them in the head, right? So that's what that means, um, swarm. Now, I don't like this word because you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a swarm of flies or a swarm of mosquitoes. We use that word to describe a group of flies or a group of mosquitoes. And I hate mosquitoes and I hate flies, <laughs> right? So um, th that can also be a verb to swarm together, right? So um, you could say like the, the enemy army swarmed in on our position. You know, if you're, if you're in like a town or city or something like that and, and uh, all the enemy armies are swarming in, like just they're like coming in like flies or like mosquitoes, right? So that's what that word means. Something's going on with my teaching stick, guys. There we go. <laughs> so um, so those are three ways you can describe a jellyfish. Bloom, smack, and swarm. You know, very often in English, words have so many different meanings. Like before this morning, I had no idea that this word smack could be used to describe jellyfish. And uh, <clears throat> I had no idea this word bloom could be used to describe a jellyfish, right? So, you know, very often, you know, maybe you know one meaning of a word, but you don't know all the meanings. 
<laughs> so, hey, don't worry about it because even native English speakers don't know. So, like I said, this morning when I woke up, I did not know these two words could, or even this one, could be used to talk about jellyfish. So, I learned something this morning. I'm proud of myself. I learned uh, some English. See, I'm always learning English too. All right, so let's go to the next one. Um, let me just take a just take a quick break to look at the. Um, so someone is saying the video is blurry again. Now, guys, I'm not sure why that is the case, but um, hey, we'll just uh, hope for the best. I'll just uh, keep. Fin I'll finish this video and then I'll try to figure out why it's blurry. So thank you guys for bearing with me. Um, I hope I can fix it. If you're a, if you're an expert on uh, technology, let me know. I don't know what's going on, but um, <laughs> so guys, thanks for all the positive comments. Really appreciate it. I love you guys so much, and I hope you're having a great day or evening wherever you are in the world. Whether it's probably right now, it's afternoon in Europe. It's probably getting toward evening in uh, in Asia. Probably what? Yeah, it's getting to bedtime probably in the Far East, like uh, Vietnam, China, the Philippines, those countries, it's probably bedtime. So thank you guys for staying up late <laughs> to join me in this live stream. So let's watch this video. Now this is another animal, interesting animal. Now you probably know the name of this animal, right? This animal is a snail. Okay, now what is the snail doing? What is it doing? The snail is, can anybody guess, in the live stream? Yeah, you guys are right. It's, uh, it's, uh, it is a snail. So, <laughs> someone said a snail with a fashionable striped house. <laughs> so, that's the snail's house there. You can describe this top part as the snail's shell. Okay, that's the, the, the shell of the, the snail. And the snail was slithering. Okay, now Kalai said it's, it's crawling, right? Some people said, use the word crawl, right? Now that's, ooh, someone even said the word creeping. Now that is the best of all. <laughs> creeping snail, that's probably the best of all. Um, now it's, to describe this as crawling is, um, is, a, is, is a way to describe it, right? How, how can we describe its movement? Well, you could say it's moving, or it's crawling, or it's slithering, or it's creeping. Now, actually, I didn't think of the word creeping when I made this video. That's the best way. I, you know, when you creep, that means you move really slowly. Like if a, if a criminal is creeping, you know, through a store at night to, to, to steal something right? That word creeping. So the snail is creeping very slowly, right? Moving. But another word you can use, you could use slithering because the word crawling, although you could say that, you could say the snail is crawling along. Yeah. But um, when we use the word crawl, it usually involves legs, right? So for something to crawl, they kind of have to have legs, um, most of the time. So you could say like the centipede is crawling along, right? Any kind of like small insect, right? They, they're like, sometimes insects are called creepy crawlies, right? Creepy crawlies. So anything, anything like insects or spiders or, uh, all these kind of little insects, right? They're creepy crawlies, creeping and crawling, you know, but for a snail, you know, a snail kind of moves in a little, in, in a way like a snake. Like a snake, right? A snake doesn't crawl. A snake slithers because snakes don't have legs, right? So anytime the, the kind of the, your body is on the ground, you're, you could kind of describe that as slithering. So the snail is kind of like slithering. Now, maybe even slithering isn't a good, good word because to kind of, to, the idea of slither kind of means like a snake to kind of wind back and forth, right? So I don't know, guys, I think I would say whoever guessed creeping 
that was probably the best, uh, the best word of all, creeping. So great job. You guys, your English is, um, is great, you know. And someone said the snail is creeping on its slimy belly. Yeah, on its slimy, right? So <laughs> the way the snails move is they excrete this kind of um, mucus substance. You know what mucus is? Mucus is like that stuff in your nose or in your mouth, right? That's kind of slimy substance. It's called mucus. And the word excrete means to like to send out of your body. Your body excretes something, right? So in this case, the snail excretes a fluid like a, <clears throat> like a mucus-like fluid and uh, it kind of moves its muscles. I don't know how it moves, but that's how it moves, right? So it's, uh, you could say, yeah, the snail is creeping along. So great job, guys. Uh, your, your vocabulary is, is top-notch. I'm proud of you. All right, so let's go to the next one. Oh, so I was going to say, yeah, this is the word I was thought of was slithering, but I think the word creeping is, uh, is a much better word. Okay, now let's look at the next one. Now, this is a good one. <laughs> I think this is going to challenge you guys. It's a great, great word. So let's watch the video. Wow. Don't you just love butterflies? They are awesome. So how would you describe what's going on? What are they doing? What are the butterflies doing? So let's just see here. Um, so someone's asking, Ben Adams is asking, this is a premiere, not a live stream, correct? No, this is a live stream. I am actually live sitting in my living room right now. <laughs> you know, so here I am live. It's my second attempt to go live. So thank you guys for putting up with uh, maybe the bad quality. Um, I'm trying to work it out so I can get really good quality, good audio quality, good video and stuff. So we'll see how it works. Oh, wow. You guys are good. Yeah, you guys are really good. So, so you know, a lot of people would describe this as flies flying the butterfly is flying around, right? Or maybe some people might say buzzing around, but actually the word buzzing is for bees. Okay, so if a bee is like buzzing around, we use that word specifically for bees. But for butterflies, we use the word um, fluttering, fluttering. Okay, so uh, this is how you spell the word here, fluttering, to flutter. Okay, to flutter means to fly but it's a little bit different it's a more specific word okay so when a bird flies right a bird flies its wings kind of at a normal speed and it's going somewhere right it's flying in a direction it's moving forward right um but now butterflies in this situation they're not really going anywhere they're not they're not just flying like a bird, right? They're fluttering around. It's kind of an inconsistent movement, right? They're kind of all over the place and they're not going forward very often. So that's the thing with, with, with animals like butterflies or hummingbirds, you know what a hummingbird is? Hummingbirds are those really small birds that that uh, flap their wings really fast and they, they can hover. Okay, so to hover means you fly, but you're not moving forward, right? Kind of like a helicopter. A helicopter can hover, but a plane cannot hover. Planes have to be moving forward, right? So with, the, with a butterfly, butterflies can kind of stay in the same place, right? So they're kind of fluttering. And also with the word f flutter, um, it kind of means to move your wings really fast. So like butterflies, they're, they're moving their wings pretty fast. And also for hummingbirds, they move their wings faster than normal birds, right? A normal bird moves its wings like that fast, right? If you look up at the Canada geese flying south for the winter here these days, you don't really, you know, you, they don't really flap their wings very fast. It's, it's like pretty slowly, 
right? I mean, they've got big wings. It depends on the kind of bird, right? But most birds fly. They don't, they don't flutter. But for small birds, you know, like small birds that mo- have really quick movements, like a finch, for example, or uh, hummingbirds or those kind of animals, they, they flutter. So you can say the, the butterflies are fluttering around, fluttering around, okay? Um, now, you might hear someone say this, my heart is fluttering. My heart is fluttering. <laughs> now, what situation would you be in where you might hear this? Let me know. So someone let me know what situation would you be in? All right, just waiting for your guys' answers here. Yeah, great, you know, great answers, guys. You're you're really smart and your English is um your English is awesome. So I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. Okay, someone got it. Right. Love, fluttering for love. It's uh, intimate, you know, anticipation. You know, it's about relationships, right? So you guys got it, right? It's about you're in a situation where you feel kind of in love, right? Maybe you're just so excited about a new, you met someone, you know, and they, they're just, you just kind of love them and it's love at first sight, right? So your heart is kind of, uh, your heart is fluttering, right? So very often we, we would use that, that word. To, and and that's, in this case, it's a good thing, right? If your heart is fluttering, that means your heart is so excited. It's kind of maybe like beating a little bit fast, right? Now, if you describe your heartbeat as fluttering, if you say, I have a fluttering heartbeat, that might actually be a medical condition. So that might not be a good thing, right? If you tell your doctor, I've got a fluttering heartbeat, that kind of means it's an inconsistent heartbeat. You know, like um, with the butterflies, the butterflies, when they're fluttering around, it's like inconsistent, right? They're not kind of moving in a straight line. Um, They're not flapping their wings at a consistent uh, like like when, when birds fly in a straight line, they're flapping their wings fairly consistently, right? But with a butterfly, I mean, sometimes maybe they just stop flapping their wings. Sometimes they're flapping their wings really fast or slow. It, it, it's pretty inconsistent, right? So the word flutter could be good if we're talking about like the context of relationships and love, but it could also be bad if we're if we're describing like the physical irregularity of our heart. So um, let me know, do you guys have a fluttering heartbeat? Have you, has your heart ever fluttered, you know, when you've met someone that you're in love with and you're so excited? <laughs> so guys, uh, that's, that's it now. I just uh, wanted to end off by asking you a question about animals. If you could be any animal, what would you be? Um, for me, you know, actually being a bird would be cool. It would be cool to fly around, kind of look at everybody, what everybody's doing. Like a, a goose, I would love to be like a Canada goose, you know, flying south for the winter. That would be awesome. Get the best of both worlds because these Canada geese, right, they enjoy the summer here in Canada, but when they fly south, they fly down to like Mexico, I think. So, they get the warm weather down in Mexico for the winter, and then they get the beautiful, like, long evenings and perfect weather here in the summer. I mean, it's not always perfect. Sometimes it's windy. Here in Calgary, the weather is always windy. But, um, you know, I wish I could be a goose. And the nice thing about uh, animals is they don't have to have passports. They just fly, right? They don't have they don't have any border, nobody, nobody enforces any border restrictions or anything on, on animals, right? So a goose can just fly down to the U.S. and then even further down to Mexico. They don't need to spend any money. They don't need a, a passport or visas. They can stay however long they want. And then when they want to come back, they just come back, right? It's easy. It'd be nice if, 
human beings were like that. Wouldn't that be awesome? You could just go wherever you want. <laughs> that would be cool. Some people are saying here uh, they want to be a bear, a cougar. Um, yeah, that's uh, awesome. Got a couple of eagles. An eagle would be awesome. You know, e eagles are one of those animals that everybody loves, right? There's on so many flags around the world. There's the eagle. Eagle, like the Albanian flag is the... The eagle, you know, eagles is a, an eagle is a, a symbol in Germany. Um, it was a symbol of the Roman Empire. It was a symbol of, uh, you know, di diff different empires have had the e the symbol of an eagle. So in the U.S., the bald eagle is a, is a, is a like their national bird, basically. You know, here in Canada, probably the Canada goose is the most common kind of bird well the, the bird that would symbolize canada although on our loony on our one dollar coin it's not a canada goose it's a loon a loon that's why we call it a loony um so, so anyway yeah there's a lot of different birds i love birds yeah animals are awesome i love animals so um yeah just great to hang out with you guys i really appreciate that you know really uh enjoy hanging out with you guys let me know if you want me to do more live lessons what you want to learn i just wanted to make this video to kind of experiment again with with going live to see if the if the audio quality is okay if the picture is okay um and what i'd like to do is have some like videos do more videos and so you can guys can kind of try to describe what's going on i think that's a great way to learn a language through pictures through videos. That's why I named my channel Mad English TV because it was, was going to use a TV to teach English. So here we are. I'm in my living room. I got my TV. So welcome guys to Mad English TV. Really appreciate you. And uh, thank you for joining me again in this live stream. So on that note, um, I think I'll bid you guys farewell. I'll walk over there because I don't have any buttons here to stop the live stream. So I'll just say thank you guys again. I love you. Wish you a great uh, day, week before Christmas. Wow, seven days before Christmas today. So <laughs> I'll, I'll wish you a, an early Merry Christmas, but I'll probably go live again uh, before Christmas or maybe even on Christmas Day. So guys, have a great, uh, great holiday season here. So nice to see you guys again. And uh, as always, I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. <laughs> Take care. All right, now I got to go walk over here. Turn off the turn off the live stream. How do I turn it off, guys? <laughs>